2023 Mercedes EQE SUV First Drive, Review. Just an elegant and practical EV. Whether you're a diehard car enthusiast or not, you're likely aware that cars don't live alone in car universe. Like all species, they have families where they live happily with their siblings big and small, old and new. This is especially true for Mercedes-Benz, who until recently mastered the art of alphanumeric model lineups. But then came EVs and things got a bit messy. So, here's the best way to describe the new 2023 Mercedes EQE SUV. It's the SUV version of the EQE sedan, which is the electric equivalent of the long-standing E-Class midsizer. You might be tempted to draw parallels between the EQE SUV and the other Mercedes SUV ending in E, like the GLE, but don't. Get used to sedans and SUVs sharing the same moniker but having either sedan and SUV built into their name. At least until Mercedes throws this new system out the window and comes up with something else, which it's already hinted at. Confused? I don't blame you. Why am I torturing you with these naming conventions? Because it's important to understand car family trees. Names mean something, they stand for something. Even if you've never driven a G, you have an idea of what it stands for. The same goes for an S. But what about an EQE SUV? Well, you're about to find out. The EQE SUV is an all-new, five-seater electric midsize SUV that's built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and offered in three different models. At the bottom end, you have the EQE 350 Plus SUV, followed by the EQE 354 Modic SUV, and lastly the EQE 504 Modic SUV. The EQE 350 Plus is only offered with rear-wheel drive and boasts 288 horsepower and 279 miles of range. The EQE 354 Modic keeps the same ponies but adds all-wheel drive, losing a bit of range in the process with 253 miles. Even more interesting is the fact that these two both start at $79,050 including destination. Then there's the EQE 504 Modic, which starts at $90,650 and squeezes 269 miles of range. It produces a more exciting 401 horsepower and delivers a 4.6 second 0 to 60 mph time. And then there are the wheels. Mercedes knocked it out of the park with sweet under the fender designs for the EQE SUV. This car's chief aerodynamicist told me that in order to reach peak aero, the SUV needs the 19-inch wheels with the blacked-out aero blades and, believe it or not, the optional aero-optimized running boards. Both of these were developed in the wind tunnel to achieve the best possible drag coefficient. Well, bud, I hate to tell ya but I'm still choosing the 21s and I found the running boards only good for getting the back of my pant legs dirty. Sorry, folks haven't been kind to Mercedes over the design of its EQ vehicles. Not as ruthless as with BMW over its huge kidney grills, but almost. I recently reviewed the EQE sedan and said that Mercedes elongated design, which reminds me of an Orca, looks better in the EQE sedan than in the larger EQS. Having seen the EQE SUV in person now, I believe the design language has finally reached its sweet spot. The SUV's larger body presents a more holistic fit. The grill, headlights, and taillights wrap around the car with grace, feeling more at home than they do on the sedans. This is especially true for the front fascia, which no longer overwhelms the front end because the front end as a whole, is, well, bigger. The profile, too, looks smooth and does an excellent job connecting the front with the rear with continuous lines. The design language found inside is essentially the same as in the rest of the EQ lineup. A 12.3-inch gauge cluster places all the information you could ever desire right in front of you. This, in addition to the fantastic head-up display, made it mostly easy for me to navigate the confusing streets of Lisbon, Portugal. In the center of the dash, there's a 12.8-inch screen, which is how you control most of the car's features. The MBUX OS is a carryover from the rest of the cars, so nothing truly unique here. There is a nice storage cubby in the pass-through under the dash that's not available in the sedan, but the rest is essentially the same. The second row is spacious and the seats are plush, offering enough legroom for folks over 6 feet tall. It's worth noting that despite testing a 500 model with the hyperscreen, the 56-inch digital dashboard won't be available in the US for the first model year of the EQE SUV. 
I drove both four Modich models over the course of two days in a wide variety of situations. City traffic, freeway traffic, narrow roads, five-lane highways, cobblestone streets, dirt roads, and even sand. And while both models are extremely alike, for obvious reasons, there are some differences to be found besides price. I'll start with the EQE 500. It has the performance chops that you'd expect from an expensive EV, but it's also charismatic and elegant looking, especially in black and with the multi-spoke 21-inch wheels. The 500 offers a serene driving experience that's just plain comfortable and relaxing. It's quiet, it's smooth, but it can swing a mean hook whenever your right foot asks for it. My tester was equipped with the optional air suspension, which came in clutch in the narrow cobblestone streets of the ancient city. In comfort mode, the steering was ideal for cruising or weaving in and out of city traffic.